Comp, episode number 10. Today I thought I'd give you a little bit of a brief overview of how the Marimba 1 Marimba is put together and I just kind of review of its overall features and sound. All right, now the Marimba comes with eight cases and as you can see here, it actually compacts together quite nicely. We have two resonator cases. We have a giant long case for rails and for hardware. I like to call this one the medieval torture device. We'll get to that one in a second. We have two cases for the bars, and then we have the two cases for the end, uh, I guess you could call them uh, the end rails or the sides of the marimba, if you will. Okay, now before we start putting the marimba together, I just want to say a few notes about the cases. The marimba one comes, well, if, if you so choose to order them, comes with these fantastic cases. These cases are incredibly sturdy. They have really nice handles just about everywhere. They have really comfortable shoulder straps with a pad. And they're just really, really nice in general. They house the marimba very well. They're very stiff and sturdy. And if you want to buy a marimba and you ever want to take it anywhere, you have to get cases. Because if not, you're going to scratch something, dent something, or God forbid, break something. And that'll be very, very bad. Sure, they're like $2,000. That's kind of a lot of money. But it's really worth it because if you put all that money into buying a marimba, you don't want to screw it up. Especially that people helping you move. They're like, oh yeah, I'll take those set of resonators right into a door and then you need a new set of resonators. So I highly recommend getting the cases. They're very awesome. Now as you can see here, I've opened up the, uh, the first end right here. And the second end, right inside here. Um, now over here on this side of the room, we have this guy right here. Now this thing contains all the rails and all the hardware. So this thing's going to be with us for pretty much the entire journey of putting this thing together. I just kind of keep it off to the side and grab something out of it when necessary. But everything has its own case inside of this case, which makes it really handy for protecting the rails and making sure they don't get scratched. Now as you can see on the end of this frame, we have a receptacle for the tube right here, and then we have a little slot down here. So basically what happens is we take the side with two ends, and we stick that bolt right in the middle there, and then this guy slides into the slot down here. Now we have this rotating cap on the end that hooks that guy together, and then we have a little twisting nut down here that locks that guy into place. So now we have an incredibly stable and sturdy uh, end frame right here. Alright, now once we get both of these set up, we have to connect the two. And that's where this handy tube comes in. We have this little sliding locking mechanism here. And we slide it into this side. Lock that into place. And then slide it into this side. Now, the only downside about this sort of design, which virtually all marimbas have, is you need an incredible amount of room to do this. Just a huge amount of room. I mean, the marimba itself takes up about 10 feet, and then you have to slide it out another 3 feet in order to connect it together. Now all four rails come in a velcroed nylon case such as this one. It's very nicely padded to protect them from harm. So to get it out, it's quite simple. You just pull it out like that. Then we need to extend it. It doesn't really have a lock to keep it in place, just kind of gravity does its job. And then we can put it in place. All right, now we can see here that on the side rail, it has these little metal pegs and then there's these nice rubberized holes down here that lock right into place. All right, now that brings us to my least favorite part of putting this thing together, and that is the resonator banks, because it's all one piece. One bank of resonators is one piece, and it weighs more than I do. So it's really, really hard to put this together by yourself. In fact, a lot of people just can't do it because they don't have the strength to do so. In fact, I don't really like doing it because you have a high chance of pulling a muscle in your hand or in your fingers while you're trying to execute this maneuver, in which case, obviously, you wouldn't be able to play that well. Um, and if you look at the instruction manual, it says, always have someone to help you put in the resonator bank. But realistically speaking, you're not always going to have someone around. So I will now videotape exactly what is required of one person to get this onto the marimba. Lifting up. Protective case. Very cool, so the two ends don't rub up against each other. Alright, here we are very carefully folding out the end. Nice 
accidentally hitting the floor and locking it into place. Now, I've got them on the wrong side, so I'm going to have to switch to the other side. I haven't done this in a while. Okay. Now, you kind of have to grab onto the rails right here. You just kind of hope you're in a good center of gravity so that these things don't hit the floor. So we're going to try to get this on the marimba. And there we have it. Notice the, the ends of the resonators just kind of graze the side of the frame a little bit. It didn't scratch anything, but it just still makes me nervous that it's just so difficult to do that on your own. So I'm going to go ahead and get the next one done and we'll move on to the next section. Now by far, my favorite part of putting this mermaid together is this guy right here. Now back in college, we effectively call this the medieval torture device. Yeah! We can inflict some pain with this sucker. Yeah, let's get a close-up of that. Mmm, delicious. Now, this actually is pretty ingenious. This device, there's two of them that slide in, one down here and one up there. And it basically makes sure that the resonators and the rails all connect together with the proper spacing. All right, so we just take this guy and it slides in just like so. There we go. Now everything is properly spaced. And the great thing is everything on this marimba is felt padded. The resonators are felt padded. These wooden blocks are felt padded. All these pieces of metal are felt padded. So you never hear any rattles or anything of that sort. All right, and then the baby medieval torture device in training goes right into there. Mm, like a glove. Now if you notice here, I don't actually have the third rail on yet. And that's because the third rail fits on top of the medieval torture device. And it kind of like further cements everything in place. And that's one of the reasons why this marimba is so darn sturdy. Okay, now let's talk about the resonators for a second. As you can see here, the resonators have an oval shape. And then down here in the bottom, they just kind of stop. They don't curve around, they don't do anything like that. Um, which is actually quite miraculous because the pitch that this resonator produces, it needs to be quite longer than the distance between the bars and the floor which a lot of marimbas have the resonator tube curl around to achieve the necessary length. Now what marimba one has done, and I quite frankly don't really understand this, but they kind of inverted the resonator so that it kind of, you have this tube within a tube concept, which is very interesting. And everything's foam padded, all this is, a, or felt rather, this is all nice felt padded in here. So nothing rattles ever, I've never heard a rattle on this marimba. Um, but it's really, it's kind of an interesting design. Now if you get one of the newer marimba ones, you can opt to get what they call the Basso Bravo resonators, which is basically where they remove the inverted resonator. Um, and they, I'm not really sure how it works, but they just have this, the same oval opening, but they put a circular cap on it. So it's an oval resonator with a circular cap, which is really fascinating. And basically what that serves to do is cut down on that really strong um, overtone, the uh, I hope I don't get my terminology mixed. It's either the first overtone or the first harmonic. Whatever. Whatever the one is above the, the primary note. It's a, and it cuts a little bit of that out, which is kind of nice. All right. Now, one of the best parts about this marimba is how you adjust the height. Not only do you have this cool cranking mechanism right here, but if you look over here, it tells you exactly how many inches your marimba is at. So you can not only get it level on both sides, but you can get it to the exact same height every time you play, which is fantastic. I know some other marimba manufacturers, they have a level system, but just because your marimba is level, doesn't mean that it was at the same height you had it at before you packed it up. So this is a really handy feature, definitely love it. And the crank is nice and smooth. It works very well. Now it's finally time to put on the bars. All of the natural bars fit into this tube. And inside, you can see that it is a whole roll of nylon that just the bars fit into. So it's kind of like a bag within a bag. So all we have to do here is remove the inner bag. And lay it down. We have these nice nylon clips here to keep the whole thing together. So we're going to release those and then roll out the bars.
Down here we have a handy little nylon pouch that holds the metal ends of the cord so that they don't scratch the barbs. Definitely a plus. And then inside, we have our nice beautiful bars. Now, I'd have to make one minor observation. I, I don't really know if it's a criticism, but my last bar here has a giant X on it. Just a giant slashed X through it. Now, I've contacted Marimba One about this, and they said that it is a system they use for marking their bars. Hang on, I think we need a close up. There we go. Giant X cut into my bar. Kind of strange. Um, they said it's just a labeling system, which, you know, I, I guess I'll, I'll take them at their word. But it's still a little disconcerting to see a big cut in my bar. Um, honestly, I, I don't really notice a sound difference because this is high C, and I might play this once every, like, four months. And only during warming up. <laughs> but still, you know, just kind of a little weird. You know, whatever. Okay, now putting on the bars is fairly simple. You just grab the cord at both ends, lift it up, and put it right on top. Very, very slowly and carefully. Okay, here we begin the process of setting the bars in position. So it's really just a matter of lining up the cord with uh, the posts, I guess is what they're called right here. Okay, now here's another slight criticism. For probably six or seven bars in a row right here at the top, the cord, if you line it up at the top, it doesn't actually line up at the bottom, which is really strange. It's lined up perfectly up here and down here that hole isn't really cut in the right place. Or, you know, I don't know how bars are made, but I'd figure you can alleviate that. So you have to end up taking your fingers here and putting it in the post, sorry about that, manually like that. Um, and as you get going, well, oh wait, now, now the top is out. Okay, well, I put that in. Now the bottom's in, now the top's in. But if you notice here, the rope is now being pulled downward, and down here is being pulled as well. Well, I don't know if that really has an effect on the sound, but it does kind of bug me. I, I would rather have the rope be, be unhindered and not pulled like this for a nice octave or so. It just seems a little strange to me. Now once we get all the bars in position, it's time to go ahead and close up the cord at the end. And they have a really neat design here. They have this kind of extra loop feature down here so that you don't have to tie a knot and then jam the knot down into the coil here, which is where a lot of manufa marimba manufacturers have you doing. But instead, we just kind of wrap it around here. And if we need to adjust it, we just pull a little bit of cord up and then change where that loop is. So it's really nice. And then you connect them together with this hook right here. And there you have it. I just put on the top bars and the marimba is totally put together. The average time for doing this by yourself is anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on how strong you are and how careful you are. Um, and now one question I get asked a lot is, if there's not a bar right here, why is there a tube there? Well, if we walk over and check it out, there actually isn't anything in there. It's, uh, it's just for show. And not every marimba manufacturer does this, but personally, I like the uniform look of the resonators having tubes there, even if there's not a bar there. Because otherwise, you just have holes in it. It looks kind of weird. Now another feature of the marimba one is up there, it makes this like cool swoosh. And people ask me, well, why are they longer up there? And the reason is, um, well, I, I, just for looks, honestly, because if we walk over here, okay, and we actually look inside this tube, I don't know if you can see this, but I am touching the cap in this tube right now. The tip of my finger is touching the cap, which means, that virtually all of this tube serves no purpose. But it looks really cool, so that's pretty much the only reason why it's there. All right, so 
that's about it on the construction side of things. Now I'll just tell you some brief pros and cons about it. Okay, so the pros, well, I guess price is about the same as everything else. It's about $12,500 for the marimba, about $2,000 for the cases. And depending on where you live, it can be up to $500 in shipping. Customer service was pretty good. Ron will give you a call, he'll email you, he'll do whatever he needs to to answer any and all questions that you have. So that's really great. And included with the purchase of the marimba is at some point in the first two years of ownership, you can get one free tuning which is fantastic. I mean, you know how much tunings cost? Typically, tuning costs $75 per octave. So for five octave, do your math, it's about $375. Kind of a lot of money. So things I like about the marimba, it's very, very sturdy. It's one of the sturdiest marimbas on the market. I definitely like that. I love the height adjustment feature. I love the way it looks. It comes in a variety of colors and styles. And one of the things that I really like is that the bars are fairly evenly spaced the whole way across the marimba. Um, and, and I really like this because if you look at a Damar marimba, which are also very good, the bars at the top get like very, very thin. And if you look at a Malatek marimba, the bars at the bottom, at least on their Imperial series, are bigger than my hand. I mean, they're huge. And it's not like it gradually gets huge. It makes a sudden jump to gigantic bars just kind of out of nowhere. So the bars here are very evenly spaced. And because I played both Stevens grip and Burton grip, I really, really like that. Now the casters on the bottom of the marimba, they're very, very stable and sturdy. It rolls very smoothly across surfaces. It's not quite like a giant wheel like you get on some like outdoor marching frames, but it's, I've certainly never had a problem rolling over small bumps and things along the way. And the cases are very, very nice. They are expensive, but man, it is so worth it. If you ever need to transport these things, the cases are just, they're beautiful. They're, they're constructed very well, very stable and sturdy. All right, now let's get into some things that I don't like. Uh, a few things that we've already touched on is the fact that there's a giant X under my top bar. I don't really like that, but that's not the biggest deal. The cutting of the holes in the bars on the top right here don't match where the pegs are quite exactly. I don't really like that. Um, the cord has a tendency to fray a lot, and I've noticed this more when playing with heavier mallets, like if I'm playing with some Gordon Stouts. It will fray very quickly. And I've since switched to Stevens mallets, and I've gone from playing, instead of the edge of the accidental so often, I'm playing more towards the center. And that's definitely helped a lot. But it's kind of funny because I asked them about that. I was like, man, my cord is fraying constantly. And they sent me this whole prepackaged kit with a special file and instructions on how to fix it, which leads me to believe that this happens kind of often. Now, as far as the resonators go, I have kind of two big complaints. The first one is that each row is all one piece, which makes it almost impossible to do yourself unless you're very strong. Now, I am a six foot tall, fairly fit 27 year old, and I can just kind of do it. But if you are like, you know, maybe shorter or not quite as strong, or maybe a little older, this is almost impossible to do by yourself. You have to have someone else there because you have a strong risk of either breaking yourself or breaking your marimba. So I don't like that. And last but not least, probably the biggest point of contention between the marimba ones and the Malatech marimbas is the marimba one does not offer tunable resonators. And if you ask them, they'll say it doesn't matter, but most of us know better. It, it definitely does matter, but it's very situational. In fact, it matters more in a small room than it does in a big hall. And we will explain that in a future video. I don't really want to get into that debate right now. There's not enough time. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time for our series on the Stevens Grip.